What is going on everybody? Back at it again with another YouTube video. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Sixers basketball, NBA in general, and you know, just to get into the basketball kind of talks. You know, obviously there is no basketball right now. Playoffs would be today. Prop most likely they would be today. When we left off, we left off against the Pistons game like what like March 11th something like that. They ended the season that day because of Rudy Gobert getting the virus and you know Elton Brand hopped on 975 the fanatic today on the Anthony Gargano show and you know he also spoke a little bit yesterday to NBC Sports Philly so I just wanted to hop on here talk about that a little bit as a diehard Sixers fan this season really was not the ideal season that everybody had in mind. And, you know, some of it falls on coaching, some of it falls on players, some of it just falls on the chemistry of the team. And we all understood that. The Sixers were an awful road team all season long. I would love the I would love for basketball to come back, even if I don't think the Sixers are going to be, you know, really contending for that title, even though they are in that three to six range in the Eastern Conference. You know, those teams are obviously the Celtics, the Sixers, the Pacers, and the Heat. And, you know, I love basketball. It's my favorite sport. But, you know, this season really just was not it. It, it just was not a good season for the Sixers. And it sucked. It really did. I had such high hopes for the season. Signing, or signing Horford was a big, 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 you know, reason why I was so excited he killed Embiid. He killed the Sixers for like the last three years during our playoff, you know, the beginning of our playoffs. You know, it sucks. I don't see Horford being on this team next year. If we can move him, I'm sure we will. It's going to be hard. That's why I, I, so it could go either way, but I really think that the Sixers might try and trade Horford. And if not by the beginning of next season, Definitely, if it's still not working out by middle, by the trade deadline of next season. That's what I think anyways. But to get into Elton Brand, he really just spoke a lot about the season and what's been going on. with. There's a, I have a bunch of bullet points down here and I'm going to get into every single one of them. But before I get into those bullet points, basically what Elton Brand was saying... He was really answering a lot of questions on the players, on the draft, on Mark Eversley, you know, getting the job for the Bulls. And he even put in a little bit of, you know, kind of funny topics with the Matisse Thibel, you know, TikTok videos that Matisse has been doing. And, you know, how he wasn't invited to the players only Zoom call. And, you know, obviously, if you're the boss of the team, you're the GM, you're, you really control everything that goes down, you control their contracts, you control, you know, who comes and who goes on this team, obviously they don't want you there, like, that, that's kind of awkward, but I, I just thought that was a little bit funny, so, to start it off, he was basically talking about the draft, you know, he says, we have, we can have up to five draft, draft picks, as you know, so we always want to want versatile players, defensive-minded players. So what that kind of is saying to me is that we're kind of going to go down the road of a Matisse Thibel type of player like we did last year. You know, last year, I, I don't know what I wanted last, last draft. I was at the draft. I didn't really understand Matisse Thibel. I didn't know. He, he's in a West. He's in the... I don't watch Washington. I, I knew who Markel was because, you know, everybody was talking about him. I didn't hear a lot about Matisse Thibel. And that's why I was like, all right, well, you know, who is this kid? Can he shoot? And, you know, after giving it some thought, you know, I really thought, all right, well, maybe this can be a good pick. And, you know, turns out that Matisse Thibel is a great player. You know, he's a great young player. He has some developing to do. He needs to work on his offensive game. Defensively, he's an absolute stud. But, you know, he, he was a shot that I didn't see. He, he was a pick that I didn't know about. 
And, you know, I kind of jumped to the gun, as us Phillies fans kind of sometimes tend to do. And we were saying, oh, well, who is this kid? Because there was a lot of reports that the that the Sixers wanted guys like Carson Edwards, guys like shooters, like Tyler Hero, uh, Cam Johnson. And they went before our pick, even though I did want Tyler Johnson. And I did want Cam Johnson, Cameron Johnson. Or Tyler Hero and Cam Johnson. Even Carson Edwards, who then went to the Celtics. But in reality, I'm very happy with the Matisse Thibel pick. He's a very good young player. He's a little bit older for his, you know, rookie class, but he's a very good player. He's a great defensive player. And give this kid a couple years and he could really be something special. So I, I do agree with the defensive minded players and the versatile players. You know, there's going to be a lot of draft videos for the Sixers, as there was with the Eagles. And, you know, I can't wait to make those videos. It's tough to know who the Sixers are going to pick because March Madness wasn't a thing. And in all honesty, I really don't care much about college basketball regular season other than Villanova. I watch them sometimes. I watch those big five teams sometimes. But other than that, I really don't watch mo anything. So... Then he kind of spoke on Mark Eversley getting the job for the Bulls. He said he was kind of just saying congratulations. You know, we still need to find that that spot to replace Mark. And he said that that time will come. So that was really kind of like just throwing it in there. And then he spoke on Ben Simmons. Now, obviously, we all know who Ben Simmons is. Ben Simmons is the point guard for the 76ers. If you don't know who he is by now, you are living under a rock. He's an all-star. He's a two-time all-star. And, you know, before, you know, I, I say the quote and everything, I think Ben Simmons is an elite player. I think he's a top five point guard, and I think he's one of the best defensive players in the league, if not the best defensive player in the league from the perimeter and just getting his hand on the ball at all times. He led the league in steals, and he did and steals per game and total steals, and he didn't play the last two weeks of the season. He played one game in, in the last two weeks, and he still is you know, leading that category in steals per game and steals total by, like, eight steals. Like, it's crazy. Like, Ben Simmons, if the season ended today, which hopefully it doesn't, but I can't see really returning, I can see Ben Simmons winning Defensive Player of the Year if they even have those awards. It's going to come down to him or Anthony Davis, in my opinion. You know, obviously Giannis is a very good defender, but... Ben Simmons was just locked down. Like, he locked down LeBron, Kawhi, Paul George. You know, guys that are very, like, that are elite scorers. James Harden. If you look at those statistics and you look on when Ben Simmons guarded so and so, it was like awful percentages. Like, LeBron and Harden were like 2 of 14, 2 of 13. Like, it was just crazy to see that all-time great play. Because James Harden is an elite scorer. He's probably the best scorer in the league. You know, obviously Durant went healthy. He probably is. But Harden is just amazing. And the fact that he could hold Harden to some terrible field goal percentages, you know, it, it really shows a lot that he can guard basically everybody, every dominant player on every team. Because, you know... Joel Embiid has the center position, so every other position, power forward, small forward, shooting guard, and, and point guard, Ben Simmons can guard the best player on the on the floor other than the center. And even if he wanted to, he can, you know, guard the center. He's done it before in-game. He plays all five positions. He can guard all five positions. Ben Simmons is an elite player. He is a top five point guard in my opinion, honestly. So he spoke on Ben, basically saying that Ben is doing a much better job He's doing great, and I did make a video on that a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago. I will put that video at the end of this one, and I will also put that in the description if you want to go check that out. Also, I'm a diehard Sixers fan. Subscribe if you love the Sixers, just like me. Comment, and you know, like this video if you're if you're a Sixers fan. A lot more Sixers content will be, you know, on the way once the NBA season starts back up. Whether it's this year or next year, you know, a lot of great Sixers content will be put out.
We are also, what, like nine, eight subs away from 400. So getting very close. Then he spoke on the big thing, the NBA season returning. Now, he said, I'm on a weekly GM call and Commissioner Adam Silver leads it. I'm on a committee for return to play, so we are trying to figure all of that out. If the season returns, you're going to need time to practice. I would love for the NBA to return. I would love to get into the playoff atmosphere of, the, of it all. But in reality, you're, never, you're not going to have playoff atmosphere basketball without fans. You're not. You're, you're not going to have it. And because of that, I just say, wait until this is over. Go into next season and pick it up and, and, and just restart the season. There's no need because you're going to still have to practice. You're going to have to get players back into shape. And even though the Sixers are, are now allowed to use the practice facility, you know, you still have to have at least like a month or so to get NBA basketball ready. You have months. You have a good two months to, to report into that training camp, into the first two months of training camp, you have that first month of conditioning, of working, of getting to know your new players to create that chemistry, and then you have, you know, the last month where you're still, where now you're putting it into game, with, you know, you're adding, you're you're making your last cuts before the season starts, you're playing preseason basketball, you're going overseas to play for this country and like the global game kind of thing. You're playing at Wells Fargo Center. You're playing in the away team stadium. But if you don't have, like, that's why, you know, it, I feel like it would just be better. You can't have playoff basketball without fans, especially for the Sixers. You saw how bad they were on the road. Without fans, it's basically playing on the road. The Sixers aren't going to be able to compete. So why waste, why have to push back next season? You know, make it December or whatever. If you can just end it, start on time for next year and put the fans back into the stadium, hopefully. Because even if there's not fans allowed in the stadium next season, at the beginning of next season, I, I still feel like you have to start. And then you can start bringing in fans as it goes on you know once you find you know a vaccine or something like that something that can just you know make it slow down because you can't hold fans out of sports forever and you know there's a lot of talk about you know they're not being fans in the stands until 2021 but we'll just have to wait and see so that's basically all for this video just wanted to get on here, talk some Sixers basketball. I love Sixers talk. You know, Elton Brand spoke on a lot of topics. Ben Simmons, Mark Eversley, you know, the draft and the NBA season returning, maybe. You know, if you like this, if you like the Sixers, again, comment, like, and subscribe. We are eight away from 400 subscribers on the channel. I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you all for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.